What's up, everything, Medicare Podcast Nation? This is Christian Brindle, where every single week I bring you some podcasts where I talk about your Medicare, your Medicaid, your Social Security, and everything that has to do with that golden age called retirement. Thank you so much for joining me. This is episode 86, and this is our first week where we're experimenting with bringing you three podcasts every single week. So I hope that you enjoy it. I really, really do. Um, after popular request from you, the audience, you guys drive the bus. Whatever you guys want, I'm going to do it for you. Whatever you want. Well, maybe there's some limitations to that. But as far as the podcast is concerned, what we're going to talk about, how often we're going to bring them to you, and specific questions being answered, we're going to do that for you. So thank you so much for listening. Th- thank you so much for tuning in. And today we're talking about dual SNP plans or special needs plans. So I'm going to talk about, there's, there's two types that I want to discuss that most commonly um, are ran into. The special needs plans come in the form most often. D SNP plans, dual SNP plans, they stand for DSMP plans. D SNPs is what they're actually commonly referred to in the industry. Then you have C SNP plans, chronic special needs plans. So what are these plans? Why do they matter? Why do you care? Well, this episode is going to be for my listeners on Medicaid. Okay, this is a Medicaid episode. So if you're not on Medicaid, you might know somebody that is. It's good information just to know in general. So let's start with D SNP plans, okay? I want to quickly tell a story. And for those of you who have listened to me for some time, you know I love to make a point by, in the, in, by telling a story. This story has to do with a client of mine and why these dual D SNP plans matter. Okay. And this is, like a lot of my stories, I ran into something similar to this a hundred different times. So it's not just one particular person I'm talking about. This is a situation where, you know, the names change, but the story always remains the same. Most people on Medicaid that also are on Medicare do not particularly understand what they qualify for and what they don't qualify for. So, to break that down a little bit, when you have Medicaid and Medicare, so typically when you have Medicare, let's start there actually, you have your Medicare Parts A and B like everybody, like everybody. Everybody pays the Medicare Part B premium, the $135.50 a month. If you're in a high income tax bracket, they can obviously charge you more. I did an episode about that Previously, go back and listen to it if you want to know more about that. But everybody pays the $135.50 a month. Now, if someone has a high enough level of their state's Medicaid, and if you're not familiar with what Medicaid is, Medicaid is assistance from your particular state. And it's going to vary based on states as well as far as how the programs work and, um, and what they are. But the state will provide assistance to people that are in a low income bracket. And it's not just low income bracket, they also provide them to children and you know people that people that are disabled in certain aspects. And there's a lot of different aspects that will determine if someone gets Medicaid, but in this case, it's more often than anything else going to be because they're in a low income bracket. So the 13550 for Medicare Part B is paid, but it's paid for by Medicaid if they have a high enough level. Medicaid grants people different levels of Medicaid depending on their need. Um, sometimes it pays for their Medicare Part B premium, sometimes it doesn't. But if they're on a high enough level, that Medicare Part B premium is paid for. And they have their Medicare A and B. It pays 80% of medical bills. It, the Medicaid will typically pay all of what Medicare doesn't pay for or it pays for very little. Um, if someone's on Medicare and Medicaid and they don't do anything about it, the government will automatically enroll that person into a Part D drug plan without asking, without them picking it. They just pick one and roll them into it. And then Medicaid provides some, some additional benefits that Medicare doesn't provide, like some kind of dental benefits. Now, this, like I said, this is going to vary based on state, and it's also going to vary based on your level of Medicaid. There's a lot of different levels, criteria, things on that nature, so it's tough for me to condense all of this down into one podcast. So 
be sensitive to that. This information is going to be helpful, but if you want more help on your particular situation, we'd have to talk one-on-one. We can talk about that more at the end. So basically, depending on your level of Medicaid is going to determine a lot of things. It's going to determine you know, what Medicare pays for, what they don't pay for. Medicaid also usually, when they pay, when they get on this Part D drug plan, when they're enrolled into it, the premium is usually paid by Medicaid, depending on their level, and their co-pays on the drug plan are basically completely taken care of, and they're very, very low at that point. You know, maybe a dollar, two, three dollars for any medication, depending on the person's level of Medicaid. If they have a relatively you know, lower level of Medicaid where they're not getting much of a subsidy, they might not get the benefits I'm describing. So I run into people all the time in my line of work that come to me, they have Medicare, they have Medicaid, they have this drug plan, but that is all they have. They have, they're in a great situation. They're not going to lose sleep at night. They're in a situation where they don't pay a premium for their Medicare. It's being paid for for them. They're in a situation where they have full medical coverage similar to what a Medicare supplement or Medigap would be that they're not paying for. They have a, they're in a situation where they have some extra benefits that Medicare wouldn't come with by itself. They're in, a, they're in a good spot. They're paying basically almost nothing for any medications they're taking. Sometimes they take a lot, sometimes they don't. They're in a good situation, but they don't realize that they could be getting a tremendous amount more. This is what I mean by that. This person, we'll call her Sherry. I don't think I've ever worked with someone named Sherry in this particular situation, but we're just going to say Sherry because I like that name. Okay, so Sherry is on a fixed income. Every tipple, every little piece of benefits she can get matter dramatically for Sherry. Okay, Sherry is on A and B. Sherry has Medicaid. Sherry has a drug plan. So all those things are paid for dramatically. Sherry doesn't have to worry about those things, which is great. Sherry has some dental help, but it's pretty limited from her state Medicaid. And some states might not give it to her at all. It just depends. Um, but anyway, Sherry has some help from her dental. But, she lets, but Sherry has a year where she has $2,000 of dental bills, and her state Medicaid program won't pay even close to all of that. She has no way of paying for the rest of it. She's, she can't even afford to get on a payment plan. And that's a true reality for a lot of people that have Medicaid. What Sherry doesn't realize is in her area, there might be a program that's called a special needs plan that can help with that. Let me, let me explain. These special needs plans, folks, work something like this. You have to have Medicare and Medicaid to qualify for them. So if you don't have Medicare and Medicaid, you cannot qualify for a special needs plan. And typically, with most of the programs, you have to have a very high level of Medicaid where you're getting a, tremend- a very high level of a subsidy. So assuming with the person I just described, Sherry, she would be in that category because she's having her Part B premium paid for. She doesn't pay any medical co-pays. She doesn't pay hardly anything for her medications. Her Part D premium plan is being paid for for her. So Sherry qualifies for a special needs plan. So why would Sherry want a special needs plan when she can already get all of these spectacular benefits from just having Medicare and Medicaid? Well, a special needs plan nine times out of 10, is going to come with a lot of dental and all kinds of other benefits built in. As a special needs plan, folks, works, a, works basically like a Medicare Advantage plan. It's a, it's, a, it's a Medicare Advantage plan on steroids. Okay, so it's really important that a person on Medicaid takes advantage of this because there is no situation where they're better off without it, in my opinion. No situation. So typically, with a lot of special needs plans, they can get $1,000 of dental, just included, no extra premium, no waiting periods, no deductibles, nothing. Two thousand, three thousand. It just depends on the market. Um, but there's going to be a lot of dental wrapped into this. So in Sherry's particular situation, she'd be protected. She'd have that on top of what she'd get for Medicaid, be more than enough to pay her bill. So there's that. She'd get a lot of glasses coverage. Medicaid's not going to help with that. She'd have hearing aid coverage. Medicaid's not going to help with that. Now, you might say, well, some Medicare Advantage plans help with these a little bit. Yes, they, they give you a little bit of these benefits, but 
a special needs plan is going to give you tenfold more than a regular Medicare Advantage would on every benefit, particularly. They're going to pay for much more transportation than you'd ever get on a regular Medicare Advantage plan. They're, they're, I've seen a lot of them that will pay for wigs if you ever get cancer. They just pay for all kinds of things, probably 10 times more different things than a regular Medicare Advantage plan would. A person on Medicaid is going to benefit tremendously by getting a special needs plan. A dual special needs plan is the one we're talking about, a D-SNP. Folks, stay with me into segment two, and we'll talk about this further, and we'll also talk about C-SNPs. Welcome back, everybody. Dual SNPs. So you kind of get how those work, right? Basically, you have to have Medicare and a a very high level of Medicaid, and you can get one. Now, not all markets are going to have a D-SNP. So if your market doesn't have a D-SNP, next best thing, you probably want a Medicare Advantage plan because it's going to give you more than Medicare would on its own, okay? And all the co-pays that they leave behind, Medicaid's going to come and pay it. It's going to still be full medical coverage, um... But a D-SNP, if your market has one, assuming that, you know, everything works out as far as your doctors being in the network, of course, that's always something you want to check out. But there are going to be a much better option for you than just having Medicare alone if you have access to one. And you see more and more markets having D-SNP plans come into the market. So that's another reason why we're doing this episode, because I think it's a more relevant topic. Opposed to only a few markets had one many years ago, now they've become much more prevalent in many more places. And there are some companies that pretty much specialize in these Medicare Medicaid programs. You know, I'm not going to say any names of them, but you might be able to guess on a couple of them. And typically their plans are really rich, really good, really great. CSNP plans are a little different. CSNP plans are chronic special needs plans. Basically, you have to have Medicare, but you have to be able to have medical costs, medical, med, uh, excuse me, medical conditions as well. For example... I saw one the other day that someone had to have specific heart conditions or diabetes. And obviously some complications with the diabetes. So basically you have to go through some health questions to see if you even qualify for it because they're mainly designed for people that have um, chronic, chronic conditions. These are great too because, you know, you don't necessarily always need Medicaid to get a plan like that. Okay. So those are two... Uh, um, those are two situations where you can get a special needs plans. You have your D-SNP plans and your C-SNP plans. They're very important for someone on Medicare and Medicaid to know about, and they come with tremendously rich benefits that you wouldn't get. And, you know, you might have great coverage with Medicare and Medicaid on its own, but you're probably better off with as much coverage as you can possibly get, especially if they come at no cost to you. The other thing that you get with some C-SNP plans, folks, is if you have any, like, let's say, expensive medications on this particular one, it really gave you tremendous lower copays on insulins and diabetes medications. So that's just something with that as well. Cheaper prescription costs, okay? So there's a lot of different uh, um, instances where someone can benefit from a special needs plan, whether it be a D-SNP or a C-SNP. And I hope, this pod, I hope this episode helped quite a bit with that. Folks, as always, this is a shorter episode than normal, but it doesn't take that much to explain. It's pretty simple, in my opinion. As always, folks, if, if you'd like to work with me on your Medicare specifically, or you'd like to just talk, you know, whether you're on Medicare and you already have had it for years, you just don't know if it's still the best thing for you anymore, you just want to have it compared just so you can sleep better at night, just to know that you're not leaving benefits on the table, or maybe you're turning 65 and you're just, you're, just, you're just lost. You're just confused. You don't know which way to go. And you'd like to work with me and my organization specifically, call our office at 801-255-5340, 801-255-5340. Ask for Christian. We currently work with people in Utah, Idaho, Florida, and Oregon. Okay, so those are the four states that we are licensed to work with people in. So if you're in one of those four states and you'd like to talk with me, give us a buzz, give us a ring. Also, folks, um, we're giving away a copy of my book, Medicare Guidance, from now to the end of the month. If you'd like to
to get a free copy of the book, go to Apple Podcasts. If you have an iPhone, it's on there on the app. If you don't, go to Google, search the Everything Medicare Podcast, Apple Podcasts. Give us a five-star review. Say something nice. Send me an email at christianb at xmission.com, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N, B is in boy, at xmission, M-I-S-S-I-O-N.com, christianb at xmission.com. And just include in the email a pi- the picture showing you did it. Your first name, I don't even need your last name, your first name and a good address I can send the book to, and I'll ship it to you completely free of charge to you. That will be going on until the end of the month. After that, the price, you will only be able to get it on Amazon for $5.50. So keep an eye out for that. We're, I'm working on another book called The Insurance Funnel. So stay tuned for more news about that. And folks, we're trying to do three YouTube videos each and every week. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays, the same schedule that the podcasts are coming out. So if you'd like to watch more of me, you'd like to watch a video of me and actually see my face when I talk, head over to YouTube. There, we have tons of videos coming up there each and every week. Subscribe for future content. We appreciate you folks because you're subscribing, you're liking the videos, you're giving us reviews. It helps us reach more people and help people understand a topic that really shouldn't be as confusing as it is. Thank you so much for listening. I can't wait to talk to you again on Saturday. Have a great day.